Hello, you one that is here on time. I appreciate you showing <laughs> up. <laughs> How you doing, Lily? I'm doing great, John. How are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. It wasn't the kind of day I wanted on the market, but it wasn't horribly bad. So I'm okay. Considering How are you guys out there? Did migraine. you all have a good day? That's <laughs> what the chat's for over there. Seriously, folks, I know there's no one here yet, but pass it on when people come in here. You got some questions? Post them. That's really why we're here. We got some information we'll share. At least I do. You got something, Lily? Well, yeah, uh, we try to keep up with the markets. Of course, we, you know, let's go ahead and just talk about the broad range stuff right now while we're waiting for people to come in. Sounds good. Um, so with the Fed and everything, of course, we have the the tapering or the tightening that's going on that they're doing. This is going to affect our markets, not just, you know, just OTC. This is broad range scale. Um, right. The today, whole country. Yeah, today, but they're going to, you know, they're just, they're going to start getting out of their bonds. They're going to let them mature. They're going to start burning this money, John. The money's going away. This is how they combat inflation. So this is going to affect our economy. It's going to affect the stock market. Matter of fact, we'll probably see the reflex, reflection of it in the stock market more than anywhere else. Yeah, um, nobody really economy. wants to say it, but we are, we are heading for a recession. We're probably on the edge of it right now. Um, yeah. And and to handle recession isn't easy. Believe it or not, they actually have to limit how many jobs they can put out there because we've raised our wages. People are paying out more money. And who do you think pays for those wages? We do. All the cost yeah. of goods, the hamburgers, they all go up. Everything goes up. And we have less money because it's just not going as far. And the market is where we put our extra money. And if there's no extra money, Jeez. That's right. That's right. And the way that these dollars, you know, they cost, the cost of that is rising interest rates. So that's what they'll keep doing because the, the money is still in demand right now. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know I want it. Until everybody gets on board and we start, you know, filtering down into this recession pool and you know, the job numbers, stuff like that, people are going to start saving. And that's what we're going to see reflected. Now, today, I think we had a lot of sideways action, a lot of volatility in the market. Or that's what I was seeing this morning. Um, and I've been watching the VIX. The VIX started spiking this morning. So I'm keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that too. So the markets are definitely going to be push and pulled. Uh, there is going to be a lot oh, of yeah. volatility because people are going to be looking for opportunities to make some money, even in a downturned market, like right now. These last six days have been incredibly different for what we've been going through on all the markets. However, the OTC is more than sluggish. I got to tell you, folks, yesterday was the worst day I have ever seen on the OTC in all the times I've traded. Now, I've only been here four years, but I have never seen share count down to five billion on the OTC. Last year at this time, it was 40 billion. Wow. So. We and last two weeks ago, we were at 10 billion, and it's not like it goes up one day and then drops a little and goes up. No, it just falls, yeah, and falls and falls. So, seriously, I am concerned here because not only are we investing in the OTC market, but this is where startup companies start. This is our incubator for all those big companies that end up on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. This is where most of them actually get their start. And if we can't support the incubators, what's that say about our future economy with new companies and new technology? I don't know. Exactly. We're going to have some hard times still yet to come. Um, not sure when the market's going to, well, the OTC's market's been reflecting this for a little while. But the rest of the broad general range, you know, stocks and market and NASDAQ, it, they're going to catch up. The Fed is insistent that we're coming down and they're going to keep the quantitative tightening going until we do. Well, you know, I don't want to call anybody a liar, but they're going to say what they need to to keep us calm and give us hope. <laughs> and they've already came out yesterday and the day before. Everybody's saying we got it wrong. We didn't see it coming. This was my mistake or they did it. The bottom line is we're in new territory. We We've are. never had to deal with this before. So we don't know how to fix it. There's going to be trial and error. And yeah. God only knows how bad the errors can be. So we've yeah. just got to be ready and smart. 
That You're money has got right. to pay your bills and feed your belly and hopefully get your security in order for the future. That's what most of us invest for is tomorrow. Exactly. And you are and, right. I mean, we we're, this is unprecedented because we've never had, the Fed's never had a balance sheet like this. I can't remember, nine trillion, I think it was. And this first three months, they're going to be like 45 billion. They're going to be burning up. They're going to let mature all these equities and treasury bonds and stuff like that. And then the three months from now in September, I want to say that doubles or triples. So it's going to be even more. So it'll be very interesting how all this plays out. What you so got we got questions? anybody out there yet? Yeah, we got about five people. How y'all doing? You have any questions? Let us know. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we jump on into this? I'm sure Let's these people are anxious. And hey, if you have some stocks you want to look at, definitely let us know. If you just want to see the chart, you just want to see the news, maybe the financial, whatever. We'll look at what Let's you want to look at. It. In the meantime, I'll show you a couple of things that I was looking at today that are catching news that you may want to consider. Even a couple of things from this week. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you were two of the big runners we had today. You got one here with 196 trades and one with 618. And right now that's wow. a lot of trades on this that market. Is a lot. <laughs> and they were each moving millions of shares. Inso did 192% gains today. And she hmm. is only at three and a half cents. This one did 144% gains. This is Wikisoft. Now Wikisoft, this is an interesting one, folks. I think a lot of you know the company Eyeless. I-L-U-S. Ilus yes. was, I do believe it was a caring courier expert play. She brought it out of the dark, got it into the light, got it pink, got it a reverse merger and boom, they're in business as fire suppression. And I mean, they're into everything with fire suppression, the trucks, the vehicles, electric for the woods, the stuff you put in hotels to put the sprinklers in, the wands that the fire department uses. They're also into the metaverse. Not as fun in games. They use it for training. Well, this company I have been seeing over and over again investing in other OTC companies. And today they became the controlling shareholder for Wikisoft Core. Wikisoft Core is no little business. This is a huge business that uh, uh, accumulates data on financial stuff and then finds insights to help companies make money with all that information. And I list got controlling authority of this company today. They've got other companies I can't remember. They own 10% of another company. They're growing folks and they're doing it at a real nice price right now. Whoa, look at that. It's up to 208% now. So even after wow. market. So Wikisoft is kicking butt right now, but Eilis is the investor and anything Wikisoft earns is going to reflect on Eilis as well. So Eilis is definitely a good one to look at, as is Wikisoft, as you can see. My God, 208%. That's sweet. Since we're here, let's see how many shares we did do today. Oh, thank God we did go up. Look at that. 5.2. I shouldn't be bragging, but it's better than 5 or 4.9. So we didn't do a whole lot today either, folks. It isn't booming yet. Um, Another company we just saw there was Inso. And so at news today as well, uh, they did 192%. They are pink limited. And that's part of the news. This company was taken over a company called OK based yields management group took control of this company and they're going to turn it into their business. There's not any melding. The other one's gone. This one is in, um, they're located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the primary focus is providing products and services to emerging agriculture markets, including the fast growing legal cannabis industry. Our immediate focus is on bringing the company current with their filings. That's the first thing they got to do. They got to get this caught up. And I'm not quite sure what their business is, except that they work with agriculture. I don't know if they sell hardware, hardware lighting, or if they have chemicals or what it is they do, but... <laughs> Taking over a company was exciting and getting it current, yep. maybe even more exciting. So when it's saying it's pink current, John, because I still see the yield sign on there. So looking at the words under it, pink current, that, that means the yield's going to go away? Yeah, pink limited problem? information. It is pink, but 
as the words say, it's limited, meaning they're late on filings. That's just okay. the way they put it. And once they're caught up on their filings, that yield sign falls away and they're just pink current. So once okay. you're caught up on filings and you just are pink, you're good. Now, when they are pink limited information, there's only so long you're allowed to be late. And uh, this site here, otcmarkets.com website, I trust this site. They came up with a new format to let us know when this company, if they don't file, is going to be yanked off the market. Now, they don't get delisted. They get put on the expert market. It is a timeout. You can't buy or sell the shares for the most part. And they're stuck there until they get their filings caught up. Once they're caught up, they come back on. Well, we don't know when this is going to fall off. And if you're invested in it, you may want to sell before it gets yanked. So what they do is they put grace period here now. Yeah. Yellow words, grace period. And that means you got a 15 day countdown before they're yanked. And I do believe if you come over here to, I think it's overview because we're not going to see it now, but right down here, I do believe they add something. They give you a countdown. They show you the date when the 15 days end. It may not be this one, but it's one of these first three here. We're so then that. if you own the stock, it gives you a chance to get out. And the reason I'm telling you that is when it goes to the expert market, the price will fall drastically. I don't know why it happens, but it'll go below triple zero one in many it'll cases. It'll be painful. And you're not going to want to sell. They'll let you sell. Oh yeah, they'll let you sell. But I mean, you're yeah. going to get eight cents for your $800 yeah, investment. Yeah. Well, hopefully they get their stuff, you know, corrected and we might see this move continue, whatever it is going on with so. Also, I got a message from uh, Mesa Goat. Mesa Goat said, uh, Hi, guys. Latest, latest NASDAQs to make your watch list. So he's wondering, you know, I guess he means stocks, latest stocks to make the watch list. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, the watch list is constantly rotating, especially if you're trying to play day trades, swing trades. I mean, the market, the gains just don't hang around very long on a lot of these small cap, micro cap stocks or the oh, OTC yeah. for that market. They're gone as soon as they get there. But if you're looking at semi long holds or long holds, the list is growing. Um, you know, there's stocks that have got potential but are being dragged down by the market because there's only so much money to go around. And as Lily was saying, there's gonna be even less of it to go around as we all need our dollars and the government's burning money. So. Who knows even what a long hold is going to be? <laughs> a long hold may have been five years. It may turn into 10 years. We have no idea how long this can last. What I do know about the them tightening, what I do know is eventually, and this is what happened last time, they'll break something. Something's going to break and they'll have to start the quantitative easing again, which will look better for you know a bullish market and stuff like that. So just keep it, you know, keep up with the news on that follow that kind of stuff. Economics, history. Now, of the right, market. right off the top of my head, I can't pull anything out because I am looking at so many stocks every day now, honestly, mm -hmm. until I actually see the page again, because I have like a semi-photographic memory. I remember things. As soon as I see them, I can tell you where everything is on that page. But until then, uh, I can't remember. Maybe it's the beard. I don't know. Um, you wanted to talk about iMac, Lily, right? I did, but we had a sand tribe. He was saying that he's just looking into blue and he thinks the healthcare sec is the next boom. And blue, um, I'm familiar with that company. We've played it several times in Penny Boys. But, is that uh, OTC yeah. stock or Penny stock? I think it's NASDAQ. Um, I do think it's a Penny stock still. Um, it's B L U E. So blue is, I do know it's in the health sector. I know it's a health. Uh, a bio bio uh, company, biotech. Jeez, so we, can't get anything here. We played it several times. I know in the disc, but I haven't I haven't messed with it lately. And um, Sand Tribe, if you want to, you know, put some thoughts out there in the blue and let us read about it, and we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it further. Is it uh, moving right now in the market? Was there some news? We can look at it. B L E. That's my thought. Slippery Mr. finger. Goat says that he likes the Enso alert. Thanks, Lily Star and John Zadar. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Keep an eye on it. So she had a real big high here, didn't she? Of 25 bucks and something happened there. She definitely, it looks like earnings. 
Yeah, she yeah. she disappointed on earnings in a very big way. And goodness, it looks like she gave away about 50%. Oh, more. She fell oh, from wow, 25 yeah. to 10. Yep. We printed about 30 is, on this one several times. Yeah, she's like one-tenth of the price right now. And she doesn't look to have a whole lot of energy to actually be doing anything. She's following her downward, downward trend still, just rolling underneath that 50, going further and further down. So if you like blue, I'd wait a little while and you can probably get it at a better price. It's very possible, especially with what's going on in the markets. So Sand Tribe also comes back with NVTA is another play. And you know, I love T. TBPMF, eight weeks to go with trials in Australia. TB will hit $18 by January 2023, my humble opinion. <laughs> T so TBPMF, he's saying, is going to hit $18 by January 2023. Well, I talk about TBPMF a lot. Um, they did just have their shareholder vote results come out. I posted that around and shared that information in my video. If you missed it, uh, they had a reverse split planned. It was supposed to happen at the end of this month. It was either a 10 to one up to a 30 to one. And I'm sure they had a good reason for it, but it got voted down. Uh, the investors said no. So they're not going to be doing a reverse split. I don't know what the reason was they were going to do it, but folks, whenever you do a reverse split, it's to solve a problem. It's to get ahead, make advantage. Yeah. So we've taken that that answer away from them. So whatever their problem was, they've still got to fix it. And they've got and they thought hacking down the shares was going to do it. I don't know. Maybe they needed the shares to make a deal. Uh, a lot of these companies use their shares as currency. That's how they make deals. And they can just give shares away and boom, they've got a whole nother company under their arm. So I don't know what the situation is. Now, I have faith in the drugs. I'm really hoping that things go faster internationally. I know they've taken Calms and Quicksleaf, their pain relief that's made out of CBD and THC internationally to get approved because the FDA had a 10-week trial that we're on eight, nine, 10 months now, and they won't even give us any updates on it really. So yeah, I do believe in their drugs. They've got one for SARS, which is really the drug they are interested in they believe that'll make them 60 billion dollars when they can get it on the market and all wow. their drugs are on the cusp of being approved it's not like they're in early stage trials no they're at the very end right now they've got lots of drugs one is already on the market here in america and canada reduvo that is their anti-nausea drug um again made with thc and cbd all their drugs are and terps i keep not saying that, but it is the terp that makes it special. Terps are nothing more than aroma and flavor. At least that's what we always use them for. Well, they found them to be directional arrows. By using specific terps, they can take the certain amount of CBD and THC and point it right at where it needs to go and take care of stuff fast. So it's a true science. So I do believe in the company. I believe they're going to go to $300 a share. No, I'm not kidding. I believe that because one, their drugs are universally needed. Everybody has pain. Every single yeah. person has pain. And if we can get rid of the opiate crisis, that's a huge, huge, huge plus that is going to make it popular. Um, the last drug that was made with CBD was the epilepsy drug uh, made by... Um, oh, Jeez, I can't I remember who makes it, but I know what you're talking about. G G so GPH or something like that. Anyways, they made this drug and they only have 200,000 customers with epilepsy. And that stock went from $18 to up to $280. I watched it because it was a cannabis stock. Wow. It was exciting. Yes. So I fully believe. And the, and the thing here is, is TBPMF is quite aware of that company and their drug after taken for a long period of time, which nobody knew at the time, causes a, a buildup in the liver. There is a toxicity it builds up oh. in the liver with that orally ingested pill. The way you take TBMF, you vape it. It's one of the only drugs the FDA has ever approved that you inhale and vape. It's not a powder. You actually heat it up and bring it into your system. And it works in three minutes. If you smoke a cigarette or joints, you know what I'm talking about. As soon as you take that puff, you pretty much feel it. So that's how fast it works. So I've got lots of faith in TBMF's products. 
I'm just fed up with all of the yeah. time delays. But I yes. got you. I'm with you there. And well, if January you know, is your set date, I'm with you there too. January is your $18. But he mentioned, um, or Sand Tribe mentioned NVTA. I'm not familiar with that one. NVTA. Yeah, NVTA. What? It won't even come up here. Uh, let's see what I get over here. N, N is in Nancy, B is in Victor, T is in Tom, A is in Abraham. Correct. Okay, go boys. That one I'm not familiar with. Invite Core. It is a New York Stock Exchange stock. It's at three dollars and fifty-six cents. Uh, had a almost a six percent jump today, which which isn't bad in in our market. No. Um. Do they have any kind of news that we're aware of? Uh, news. I'm normally on Google. Bing is not where I normally yeah. go to. Benchmark prices slashed. Corporation, find out why. This is probably just one of those. Uh, let me see. Price surged by 14.86% to reach 52 cents on May 27th. 52 cents? Yes. What? How about yeah, that's to that. This came out yesterday, so uh, the price fifty two cents on May twenty seventh. Has it gone up that much? Let, no, let me go. That, that's, that cannot be right. No, no, no it's not down actually. In the, in the I don't see no fifty two cents over here at all. No, we're right. not even close to that. Last twenty days, it's went from six twelve and it's dropped down to three twenty six for the low and sitting around three fifty six right now. Maybe they were talking about a 52 cent move. Maybe. Yeah, that, that would make more sense. But I can see that she has been trying to get over that 200. She's jumped at once here and she got beat down for it. Just trying to get over that 200 forced her down very hard. Had a close attempt there. She's made another attempt here. We've had two days of down beating. Looks like she doesn't want to go down as far. I would say she's trying to change her strategy here. I can see the MACD is turning. We're getting close to the signal line. However, it is on a very long downtrend. There's just no doubt about yeah. that. And to fight that, it's going to, now the volume's kicked up here in the, in this recent time. Yeah. Over the last 30 days, there's been quite a lot more volume, but it isn't really bringing the price up right now. She's struggling just to stay near the 50 on the four hour. What's a five minute look like? Oh, she is volatile, isn't she? She is uh, yeah. jumping from about uh, 335 up to 410. That's not a bad jump, That's but she's giving play. it all away. She's just yeah. going up and down. So, you know, right now, it looks they're like... They're fighting right now. What's that? Looks like they're fighting right now, short sellers and the bulls. And I don't know what the yeah. information yeah. is. I don't know what the news is, but it looks like they're duking it out right now on the chart. Yeah, I would, uh, you know, looking at the MACD, you, you can see when, when the MACD crosses that signal line, she started to get a, a push up. She's far above the signal line all the time she's climbing. Once she came below the signal line, that's when the fall started. Yeah. This is a good, a good bounce thing because she goes up and down, up and down. So just look for her lows and wait for her to start coming up. And it's, now this was a trick for there, boy, there was a lot of hope it was going to cross and it didn't. And you can see she's not staying up there very much at all. So I wouldn't touch this until she actually got over that signal line, but she is still falling. Gotcha. And then Sand Tribe was saying that with the TV, is it PMF? Yeah, TV, TV PMF. PMF. Yeah, he, he, knows, he, he knew they will hit 300, just like you were saying. That he, he believes the same thing you do, John. <laughs> All right. If we haven't got another stock, so, throw one yeah, at you. Yeah, I was going to talk to y'all about IMAX, some news that I saw around yeah. the, maybe the middle of May or so. Um, we had a, a big time investor, you know, Peter Lynch, that had put a stake in the IMAC at IMAC. And um, I want to say is a 5.2% stake or 5.2 million. I'm not sure which one it was. And I just saw it really quickly today. Um, not sure how I missed it, especially since it's OTC. But um, definitely want to talk about it because we were, you know, looking at the chart and of course it, it popped off. But 
it's only giving back about maybe half of it. It's holding up really well. So, <laughs> and, I mean, this is big money we're talking about. So what's Peter Lynch doing, y'all? Well, I always get interested when I see a yeah. rich person invest in a little yeah. tiny stock that obviously is like a pair of sneakers to him. It just exactly. really isn't all that important. He must see something down the road because these rich people got patience. See or no? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Peter Lynch. Yep. Peter Lynch. Uh, uh, IMAC. Stock was IMAC. Yeah. Investor Peter Lynch just bet on IMAC stock. IMAC holding stock is up more than 15% on news that the legendary investor Peter Lynch has taken a stake in the company. The uh, Lynch is reserved as one of the all time great stock pickers. Aha, uh -huh, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, prior to today, IMAX stock was trading at about 85 cents a share. Uh, let me yeah, see. Yeah, he put on 75, 85 cents whenever he that news came out. And I want to say it's holding a dollar twenty-three or dollar twenty-five right now. It says here Lynch typically tries to avoid owning more than five percent of any stock, but he owns five point two of this one. Let's go see what that chart looks like. And the chart, in my opinion, especially since it's already popped off, but it's it's beautiful. Chart looks good. If you go to more recent, looks really nice. I was trying to see what date is that? That is uh, April 7th. Whatever happened yeah. April 7th was quite exciting. Holy cow. Whatever that <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss that. So that's worthy of looking at. A lot of volume came in there. But obviously, this is the Peter Lynch period right in this area. Yep. Yep, the 18th, the news came out late in the day. You can tell, can't you? Came yeah. out late in the day. Even after market and pre-market, it continued growing, ran the whole next day, held its strength, had another day of growth. And as you said, it's holding on to them. It did yeah. have a roll down to its 20-day SMA here, but it's hanging right it up there, really, really nice. nice. Really and you nice. don't see that with a lot of stocks here recently. Yeah, especially on the OTC. So I'm like, this one has me interested. Yeah, she was running flat. You can see nobody was really paying any mind to her until Peter did. Once Peter put his eyes on it, everybody else put their eyes on it and their money. And she is, to me, it looks like she is waiting for this 200-day SMA to creep up yep. to her. She's just biding time, going sideways. And once it gets up to there, there could be a push. We've got a crossover and, down here. And that gives us time to let's dig in and see what's happening. Because we might find a nice position or entry position for this stock if you're interested in playing. But um, One of the best places to look is just to go to the 10Q. Just go to the uh, yes. financial. Don't be going around looking at news and all that. Go to the horse's mouth. They'll give you all the details. Nothing will be left out. And it's not as tough to find as you think. I mean, seriously, just use a few key words and put in a search. And it'll just go through the whole page and find it for you. Heck of a lot easier than scrolling through all 90 pages or whatever. Exactly. So let me see here. Questions right now. Yep, if y'all have any questions, y'all get them out there. Um, let me see. How about I show you this one? You guys like free stuff. Always. This is a, all right. This is a company called UA Multimedia. They came out with a news piece yesterday, and I put this in my video, but not everyone's seen my video. Um, UA Multimedia is giving a loyalty NFT to anyone who owns their shares, cutoff date, June 30th. So okay. if you own any shares of this stun this stunky, <laughs> this company, before June 30th, you're going to receive a free NFT. I don't know what it is. I don't know what its value is. Then on top of that, they tell us here that the shareholders will also receive a to be announced pro rata amount of Gogi. That is their own personal token. They are putting this on the Binance Smart Chain and the Ethereum blockchain. And you're going to get your free NFT and a certain amount of free Goji uh, tokens. So if you're liking free Very things, good. I don't have any information about value or what they are, but they don't cost you anything but the cost of the stock you're going to hold anyways. So that may be something you want to do a little more DD on. See what that's all about. Yeah, good idea. And they are pink current. I saw that. So 
Yeah, I would check into them for sure. Here's another company that I looked at yesterday, and this is very interesting. I'm sure you've heard of iQuesto. iQuesto has been making a lot of deals with a lot of companies. I think they have a deal with Alley, which is supposedly making oh. the electric motorcycle. Yeah, the motorbikes. Yeah. Right. That's supposed to be for the Bodie Bodie, which is a taxi over in Africa, you know, a sidecar. <laughs> um, they've also got a few other deals out there. And this is a deal that they've been working on for two years. Now, they said they started this back in May of 2021. When I went to look up the news, wrong, typo, it was May 2020. That's how long they've been working on it. Oh, They are looking to purchase a fiber optic line that is 2,300 miles long. And it's here in America. And they're doing wow. their due diligence on it now. Now, they were invited to be a participant to bid on this. And they got narrowed down and now they're right there at the juncture. And they tell us here, uh, the acquisition would accelerate Iquesto's entry into the 5G marketplace expected to reach 700 billion. Following a 90 day due diligence period, Iquesto is expected to make an offer for the acquisition of 100%. So you're looking at about September. September, they will be looking to probably say they're making a deal here because they've been working on it for two years and they want to connect this. If I, I don't think they have it written here. I've seen it in another piece of news. They want to connect this fiber optic to Central America, um, Mexico. I mean, they want to really spread it out and they've got big plans for it. So these things aren't cheap. The fiber optics and the cables and stuff, that's not cheap. They will not release the name of the company that owns this 2,300 mile. But hey, think about it. How That's many companies lot. are there in America that own that much fiber optic cable? Can't I don't many. know. <laughs> right. Not Can't too many. many. And there's not a lot of 5G market out there right now. Verizon's got some. But I mean, for all the hype and hoopla that we've had for years, it's still kind of lagging behind, isn't it? Yeah. I would agree. Uh, let me see. They're there very was... interesting, John. I used to work with IT and fiber optics and stuff like that. That stuff is a no no joke. It is very expensive. Yeah, and 2,300 miles. That's a well, that's end to end, isn't it? I mean, isn't it? I can't virtually... even fathom it being that long of how delicate those cables are because they're literally like glass. I mean, inside a big cable, but it's like glass. Now, this was another company today that had news, but they also had news yesterday. They are a Bitcoin mining company. So they own all these Bitcoin miners. Yesterday, they bought 750 more. Today, they bought 850 more. I think oh. they've got something like 5,188 Bitcoin miners now. They and who think, is that for? Huh? Who, which company is that? This is Bit Origin. I'll come in so you can get some information here. Uh, Bit Origins ticker is BTOG. They took a big leap this morning. We'll go over there and look at the chart. They took a big leap this morning. Yeah. And then fell fast. Fell really fast. I'll come down to the five day, five minute. She was planning off here. Now she had news yesterday, buying 750. She had news today. Uh, actually, that's the 750. Today was the 850. She Ooh, launched scary. early Ooh. morning. And then, I mean, just top of it. I mean, that was a massive, even lower than it was building up to. It came down even lower. Yeah. But yeah. She's I like back companies all the way. that are doing this. I like companies that are getting to those miners and, and wanting to do the Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever it is. Even though those markets aren't doing so well right now, I, I think that's great future potential. I really do. They say when they are at full capacity, they are expected to produce 63 Bitcoins per month. Now, at today's price, roughly $30,000, you're looking at about $1.9 million a month. But of course, Bitcoin goes up, so does that value. And that's their revenue. That's how they constitute their revenue. Now, there is another company that just came on the market, Polkadot. Polkadot is a cryptocurrency. Now, I'm not a lot into crypto, but you know, yeah. I know some of the buzzwords. And Polkadot has their own platform, their, their own coin out there, and they just put out a stock. Polka dot. And that's all it does. It just monitors the price of polka dot and the stock is in relation to that. So if you're interested in following crypto without buying the coin, they've actually yeah. got a stock for polka dot now. I'll check that out. Um, Sand Tribe has asked us to look over VSB 
GF. I put it on the screen for you. Yeah, I better come peek at that one. Watch out, folks. I'm going to make you dizzy here. <laughs> BSBGF. 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 That sounds familiar to me. Visibility Group. All right. This is one of those companies I did cover. I need to actually see something to bring it all back to me. VSBG. There it is. There you go. Why is it not it's coming up? It keeps seeing Bluebird. It says Bluebird there, but I got vi visibility down here. What is up with that? End of agreement. <laughs> Try it again. Make sure it didn't enter wrong. There we go. Okay. All right. So she had barely a half a percent gain today. She's at 36 cents. She's on the QB. That's a good place for a, an OTC stock to be. At least you know those financials are audited. They're real numbers. They got all their green ticks over here. So they really look good. They don't look like they've got any danger going on. Danger, Will Robinson. All right, let's see. This is April. Let me go back a little further because I'm sure I looked at this. Oh, not that far. All right. Um, visibility computer vision in the metaverse retail experience featuring store as a medium. Um, visibility presents a store as a medium software. Still working on it. This is bringing us into channel partner of the year. Agreements. Let's see here. Uh, this earnings call. Trying to see if they have an update here. They keep talking about the money. Uh, well, that Visibility, is a lot of news. Raid, radar app, Wi-Fi, six base surveillance network being installed. Oh, isn't Visibility the one making that smart city down in Mexico? I think they are. Um, they, I think they have this, uh, like there, threat detection. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, you know, there. It's it's not like a internet of things city. It's a safe city. It's a city that monitors you and, and can see guns in your pocket and stuff like that. Yeah. So, they, so they've got a lot of technology. Let's see what their share structure is since we're here. Not a bad share structure. It's 177 million. I mean, it's not a billion. You get a lot of that here. Sure. And uh, what was their... Yeah, volume was low today, but you know... that. You really can't blame the company. Volume was low on the entire market. So it's going to sure. spread out thin. Literally, it was just thin. Let's take a look at that chart then. What was she doing uh, six months ago? She was at $1.60 and she's at 34 as her low now. Uh, I want to go back one year. I want to see if she was just coming up and bouncing or if she was actually, yeah, she had something happen here. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'm sure some news what came out about run. Mexico. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Just up one side of the mountain and down the other. Yeah. Still looks like she's on a downtrend. I don't see a whole lot of power here right now. Uh, that is on the daily. You're not going to see a whole lot on the daily. On the 20 day, she's had a big fall here showing some volatility, but then the market has been weird this last week. I'll tell you what. She's rolling across the screen sideways. I mean, just working sideways with an ever so light downtrend. I do see she's trying to fight again, but you can see she's had a lot of crossovers here and she's not getting anywhere with them. So she really does need a catalyst. But honestly, folks, I'm seeing lots of good news every single day that just isn't responding on the market. There's no volume because, well, there's no money. I mean, let's be honest here. This is what it comes down to. And this is why you've got to be so particular about the momentum plays you get into. The momentum isn't going to go as long as it probably did before. You're going to have to be quick in taking your gains, folks. Don't get greedy, honestly. If you were right. expecting a 100% return, settle for 40. Just take what you can get because it's better than being taken. Lock it <laughs> in. Absolutely. So uh, Mesa Goat was saying, he was asking if we had any opinions on INTK. Um, he said lots of big deals, et cetera. Huge thermo cooling tech potential. I think we did speak about INTK maybe last week. INTK, the industrial nanotech. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with this one. I don't even recall actually looking at it. I think they asked about it last week or the week before. 
Industrial Nanotech funds and participates in research with the world's brightest scientists and leading laboratories. We produce materials that work for you. Oh, all right. I didn't know anything about the cooling agent. Um, I remember when we looked at this, they had some uh, paints, which I've already seen out in other products, but they have these paints that when they get hot, they change colors so that they put them on like hotel doors. When there's a fire, you can see it turn red. You know not to touch that door or just the words come up hot because that's what they painted in this special paint. Or you put it on boilers or pipes. And if mm -hmm. there's ever a leak in the pipe, it just starts to turn red and you're aware of a problem before it happens. I do remember that. Uh, they got some new current news here. Maybe they had news come out yesterday. Industrial Nanotech announces finder fee program. Finder fee. <laughs> Can we make some money? <laughs> <laughs> Find a program for the shareholders. Uh, Nanotech is formalizing its longstanding policy of giving shareholders a fee for every referral or lead that leads to new business opportunities for the company. I was joking, but <laughs> they're they're going to use their own shareholders as leads. I mean, that's pretty intelligent. Um, under the fee program, shareholders will receive 5% of the first purchase by the referred customer and 2.5% on subsequent purchases. Folks, you know, I don't know what it is you do, but if you have any skill or talent, do some DD with this company. If you can be a liaison, if you can bring this company's product, their, their technology to somebody who could put it to use, they're going to give you 5% of whatever that deal is initially and then 2.5% repeated payments every time they buy more. Shoot. Well, I'm going to get started on that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I don't remember all of their products, but I do remember that they had some pretty neat products. And uh, he was saying they had something about keeping things cool, or was it this maybe he was talking about? The, the cool paint, the hot paint. Well, maybe. Uh, let me see. They have anything else here. Inc. posted Q1 2022 quarterly revenue of over 3 million up 678% on the previous quarter, not That's last year's good, quarter, though, right? not going a year back. We're yeah. going only three months back up 678%. It's a fantastic number. Yeah, man. They tripled their revenues. Well, six times, six times yeah. their revenues. So the company looks like they've got their tech going out there. They're looking for business and they're actually going to pay people. I'm, I'm going to kind of look at this. Times yeah, are yeah, tough yeah, right I like now. That, I like that. Reminds I work at home. I know how to use Google. <laughs> and no one says you have to knock on the door. You can just call the company up, you know, and say, hey, man. Or maybe you're in, you work with one of those companies already. Who knows? Yeah. But, oh, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. All right. Now, this company does have a ton of shares. They've got almost two billion in the float. Quite a lot there. There's a lot. Um, this is a company that is uh, at fifty percent its value right now. There's a lot of buzz out there about Grom. I haven't been following Grom. I just everywhere I went today, they were talking about Grom. So I figured I might as well bring it up and show it to you, folks. As I said, I don't know. Do you know anything about Grom, Lily? I haven't heard anything, but since you're saying you're seeing it everywhere, I like hearing the the sentiment. You know, when you start seeing it everywhere and people are talking about it, then uh, it's probably got some potential. I'm reading. Let me see. Uh, this is back 2021. Acquires family friendly content creator. Curious Inc. is oh Grom, Grom. Okay, you know it. <laughs> I'm remembering it now. For those of you who have any experience with the UK, maybe you've heard of Grom, the cartoon character. Grom is a, a animation company. They work with other companies to create their cartoons, to make cartoons. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking at Netflix and I do a search and I just put in one letter to look for movies. Eight out of 10 things they show me are cartoons. I didn't realize they make so many bloody things for children. Oh my God, the market is flooded with cartoons. Oh, and yeah. that's what this company does. They professionally do special work with cartoons for all these other companies. And that's how they're making their money. Uh, let's just see what their financial results were. Revenues for the first quarter were 1.8 million compared to 1.2 million a year ago. Um, 
Profit, 1.7 million or 1 million basically. So they're in the profits. The thing I was reading over and over again is that it's trading at half its value right now. It's just undervalued as most of the stocks there's are. There's a lot. Right yeah, there's a lot like that. <laughs> there's a lot like that. So why they're bringing up Grom particularly, I don't know because I got a lot of baskets with stocks that are undervalued. Tons of them. Just look at the charts. The ones that are going downhill and were $25 and are $1.20. Yeah, that's probably undervalued. So we got anything out there? I'm about ready to run Did out of we, stocks. Um, show you. Wire Joker said, I'm hoping the OTC will wake up big time when Webull starts offering the free commissions. Uh, do we have any thoughts on this? So we well, will, is going to do OTC free. Did you hear about that, John? I think we talked about it. I No, go for it. I'm, that's I'm amazing. Good. That's huge. So we will, I don't know if Robin Hood's going to do it too, but we will was talking about that. So they're not going to charge for your OTC trades. Do um, you know of anybody else that doesn't charge for OTC trades? I know Fidelity doesn't, but I think it's only like a couple hundred. Oh, tickers. very limited. Yeah, it's very limited. And I don't know if Weeble will take the same type of approach. I'm not sure. Now, um, there's another one out there I'm aware of. They're a brand new broker that came online. They use TradingView as their backbone. They are expanding. They are getting bigger. It's a little simple right now, but they do not charge for OTC trades. It is called uh, Trading Aries. Trading yeah, Aries. Trading uh, Aries. That's the other one. Right. It's, it's not... A real fancy site, but the trades are legit. They go through trading view. They, they are growing right now and it's free. And, you know, as you said, it is a big deal. I think Weeble doing that could bring in more people. Uh, I know I'm deterred from trading on the OTC market because I've got to come up with $14 profit before I can even think of exiting. And in today's market, I can't even guarantee a $14 jump. So, not really. So I've been playing the penny stocks on the NASDAQ because I saved $14 right from the start. Yeah, so and I, I've been playing those a lot too. The, the last OTC trade that I was in was SYSX and it held up pretty good for a while. Um, yep. I think it's starting to break down now finally. It's just like a- Yeah, well that, that she had at least it. two weeks, didn't she? Yeah, um, and that's what I was telling everybody. SYSX, the news that was anticipated was the end of May. And so it's kind of, I think it's starting to give it back now, just slowly. But it was a substantial move. So that's the last one I did on the OTC. Um, all right, she's had a big fall. And it looks like she's oh, absolutely yeah. doing nothing. The only yeah. way you know she's doing something is all that volume. Yep, look at that. <laughs> I mean, it is tapering off, as yes, is all is. the markets, but it's there. I but think when you're coming closer, you can see she's had activity. It is ups and downs, but look at that 200. She is yep. working her way up. She has dipped under it today. Looks like we yep. got a cross offer down here. She wants to fix that. I think she wants to stay above the 200. That's where she's comfortable. And SysX has got a lot going for it. I mean, she does. Okay. She carries her own weight. So I don't expect her to drop because of anything she's done wrong. The market may pull her down a little bit, but she's fighting. She's fighting the tide. The technicals really look good right now on the uh, one hour, five minute. This has been a bad week for her, no doubt. But, you know, she had a, lo a lot of days of gain. And I think, I think people are just moving their money around, playing the market. Uh, it, investors are getting thin. Yeah, because people finding, need cash. They're finding the opportunity. And I think a lot of them, is, you know, left this position. I, I left it a couple of weeks ago after the initial move up. And I was watching it. I thought about re-entering. And I was like, you know what? Why mess up a good thing? You're done. You did it. You're done. <laughs> now, there's a very good likelihood that if she can get over her 200 here on the five minute, the technicals are looking promising. Everything is pointing up. We have a crossover and that is, let me come in on that. That is a very strong, deliberate crossover. That's just not a gentle one skimming over through. That is firm and hard. So I would not be surprised to see this jump, to actually see it get on top of that 200. That's the one minute, which is worth. 
Yeah, I would watch this. She's sitting on that 50. She is not going below the 50. That's a nice launch pad to get onto the 200. And if, if you can get a PR to come out at the same time, it's amazing how often I see that. Just as SMA, oh, yeah. the low bubbles appear, you'd oh, yeah. swear to God they had a PR waiting. Hit it now. They absolutely had it waiting. You know it. <laughs> And boom, you get three yeah, times yeah. as much launch off of it than you normally would because you have compounding interest. Yep. And Mesa Goat was also saying about polka dot that you were talking about. He says it seems like a good idea and it's worth a try. So he appreciates you mentioning that, John. They're very clear in there that they are investing in polka dot, but all the things that they're doing is not going to help their revenues. They are very clear telling you what they're doing and you're going, how can that not? They said this is only following the price. That's all it's doing. So, but you know, when polka dot starts moving and you don't want to own the crypto, you want to own the security, it could be a, a safer bet. And I don't know, I would expect uh well, I haven't been watching crypto here. I, I saw it started I with either. what's that? I said I haven't either. I know we kind of we were in a downtrend with crypto, but that's about all I know. Yeah, the only place I see it is in the morning, the futures. I'm not used to it, but they have Ethereum futures and Bitcoin futures. And uh, I can actually see when the futures are falling, which do align up. You know, they do follow the market. So you get to see what's going on there. So SysX is looking good for a recovery. Everything is coming together here. It's light. It's not boiling water, but it's still definitely warm. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, I feel like the 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 initial beginning where where I got in where we were playing before, but um, I'll keep an eye on it. Mesa Goat was talking about he went back to INTK. Um, he said the the CEO Stuart Burchill is definitely refreshing to watch and to look for his videos. So he's cool. like, you know the INTK CEO is on. I'm assuming YouTube. Nice. Now, yeah, there was a piece of news that came yeah. out yesterday that you can make use of either for investing in this company or for NFTs. This company, Humble, you know Humble, don't you, Lily? Yeah, I do. I'm very familiar with Humble. TSNP reverse merger. Yeah, well, that's the beauty. Humble just came out with a Search 3 engine. And what this engine is for is the blockchain. It crosses all the blockchains so it can search all of them at one time. And its particular purpose is to find NFTs amongst all the different blockchains, whether by wallet or by address. And it works across lots of different platforms. First of its kind that I know of. Sorry, Google, you missed the boat. <laughs> so if you're an NFT hunter and you're tired of hunting you may like to check out Humble's new Search 3 for the web. It's a downloading one and it works, obviously. It and this is, the, this is the stock. Humble's uh, was a reverse merger with a floor store of New York. Yeah, and it, it was popular. It, it took off. It was a great run. People had lots of fun in it. And since then, it's been up and down, you know, it hasn't yeah. had a whole lot of, uh, they even did a reverse split too. And I think he said that they would not do that and they did it anyway. So you have to be careful when you're playing. Yeah. And just because they say, I mean, you can sue them. You have the right to sue them if they say we're not going to do a reverse split and they do. But in case yeah. most of you people don't know, lots of investors sue these companies. Lots of them. And most of the suits never even get out of the lawyer's office. They just don't get anywhere. Yeah. But here's something most people don't know. To file as part of the class action suits, you have to have lost a minimum of $100,000. What? How many of us are putting $100,000 wow. in a flimsy well, pants? No, pack? absolutely not. <laughs> right? So... This is why they don't go anywhere. Nobody loses that kind of money. Yeah. If you did, well, shame on you for investing so that much in the first place. They protect them from that when they decide to do whatever they want. And um, the investors, you know, will feel a certain way because you, you want to trust in what they're saying and what the management's telling you is going to happen. And everybody gets so hyped up. And then you get these rug pulls or reverse splits. So just be careful with that. Um, Mesa Goat was saying, we're going back to the Weeble and offering the OTC. He said he heard Weeble will only do stocks more than a dime, which is 10 cents. Um, 
some of I don't know for sure. I did hear they're going to offer them and they might do that. I want to say that first trade also, you can only trade the OTC on first trade if you're over a dime on that. Yeah, there's a couple. I I see. I only work with TD Ameritrade. I don't, I have no experience with any other broker and even doing a Google search, they do not reveal all of the if, ands, and buts to their OTC trading on the outside. You don't learn it till you actually sign up for an account and get inside and then start to use it. And there are companies that will only sell OTC stocks over a penny or over a dime. Over and, a dime. You know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, except obviously there's a whole lot of market you're missing out on. Exactly. You're just not going to be able to play it. Exactly. So I don't know what the limitations are going to be with Weeble. Um, I'm just happy to hear somebody is going to offer no fees because that's how no well, fees started for the whole markets. One company did it and then others followed suit. Exactly. And you were saying, was it Toro? What was it called again? Trading Aries. Trading Aries. I keep saying Toro because Aries in the bull. <laughs> so trading Aries. Now that, if there is an Aries a Ram. Officers, What's that? Isn't Aries a ram? I thought Aries was the bull. Because I'm thinking of the... Taurus is the bull. Yeah, Taurus. And maybe I'm thinking because of... Um, oh my I'm God. teasing you. Don't worry about it. Go on. Don't get me into that, John. We're talking stocks right now. <laughs> but I keep thinking that because of the God of War, I think. Anyway, let's, let's not get into that. <laughs> so we got a, another question. Uh, Wire Joker said, no, no foreign fee either. If we will do, uh, it may be TDA, et cetera, have to follow. So, yeah, they're saying they do offer no fees that maybe the other ones will have to follow that. And that would be sweet. That would be really sweet. That, uh, yeah, I, I would like, like to have no fees. Free. Yeah. It's always a calculation for me. You know, you look at the price and you say, well, first off, that $14 could buy how many shares at 002? Oh that's, my God, that's a lot exactly. of shares we're throwing away, exactly. right? Yes, it's it, very aggravating and, and frustrating, but I think TD Ameritrade, I think it's what, six ninety five dollars or so when you're trading OTC. And I know E-Trade, I think they do four ninety five. dollars but that's And the then there's, a, there's another one out there that actually charges piece rate. It goes by how many shares? I think they charge like 0. 0.0003 oh, okay. for every share you buy, something okay. like that. And it's like, oh no, I just bought a million of these. No, I'm not paying you $300 fee. They <laughs> all want a piece of it, you guys. So just plan accordingly if you're going to play or or we'll check out the Trading Aries, right? Trading Aries. Trading Aries. Check it out. Why not? It's going to develop and get better and better with their platform. So check it out. So the, keep your eye on the market, folks. There's a lot going on in the world. I don't expect the OTC to do any huge changes in direction or bounces. As I've said before, there are very few things that are going to save the OTC. I mean, we're at critical blood pressure right now. I mean, the market's in a coma. It really is in a coma right now. Um, the cannabis could save the market with a thousand cannabis companies on the OTCs. Oh, since I brought that up, did you know that we just had a company called Bright Green get onto the NASDAQ? It is a U.S. cannabis company and they do touch the plant. That is why those thousand companies on the OTC aren't on the NASDAQ or New York because they touch the plant. Mm -hmm. Canadian companies can, but not ours. Well, they just had one go public um, May 17th or May 24th. Which one was that? It was called Bright Green. Now, okay. I did some investigating into Bright Green. It was a very interesting situation. First off, they had to get a license through the DEA, and they can only sell it to particular customers uh, for certain reasons. So their customer base was going to be very, very small. It wasn't like they were selling recreational marijuana. Mm -hmm. Two, it was not an IPO. It was a direct offering. A direct offering, for those uh -huh. of you who don't know, is insiders selling their shares. They're putting their shares on the market. So that's their money. That came on the market around seven bucks, I believe it was. Hit $25 the first day, $58 wow. the second day. And is, wow. now, and is now just over six bucks. 
I'm so sure the insiders took them. all of their money. That was yeah. their investment. Now, the more I dug, the more I found. The company owns a greenhouse that is burned to the ground. There is nothing. They didn't have electricity, so they couldn't pump water to put the fire out. They lost the greenhouse. The CEO, oh the CEO that was in charge before has sued because the valuation for the company, which is very important to get onto the market, you have to have something like $10 million to $30 million in the bank be, be yeah. worth that value. They didn't come anywhere close to it. They, uh -huh. they tell you, we did not test this. We don't know what its true value is. They now tell us it's probably going to be delisted in just a couple of weeks. They're just going to oh pull off the market. Oh, wow. Scandalous. They, Scandalous. Pump and dump. It is a pump and dump. They it put was. it out there. It ran to 58 bucks. They took their money and it looks like it's going to fall just away now. And, and they weren't going to make any money. the SEC even allow this to happen? And, so, and the, the retail investor is the one that's paying for that right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. $58 was a nice return for the, and you know, oh, the yeah. insiders got their money back. They weren't stupid. But what so, happens to the next company that actually gets to, you know, uplist, it's actually touch hands on all these greenhouses. Everybody's going to be so fearful to even mess with the stupid thing. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. It, yeah, it only okay. takes one bad egg. You know, my mom mm -hmm. won't go to Burger King anymore because she got a rotten pickle on one burger 29 years ago. And that was it. <laughs> uh, right. That's 29 years of business. Burger King lost over one silly pickle. So, you know, <laughs> things matter. People don't forget this yeah. stuff. Oh, uh, and here's here's one more bit, bit of news. I know we run over five. It's uh, high times. For any of you that are invested into high times, high times went pre-IPO three years ago. You know high times. I the do. marijuana I magazine. My father-in-law was in their magazine in the 40s or 60s. Well, the company was sold out. So, <laughs> the company got bought out by some other people who only wanted the brand. That was all they were interested in to make money. They really didn't have the heart for the company like the rest of the people did. They went to put it on the open market. A bunch of us invested pre-IPO. They've got thousands of my dollars they've been holding for years. Um, they got caught selling shares pre-IPO when they were told they could not sell. They got fined. They didn't want to pay the fine, so they said, the hell with it. We're not going to go public. And they just wow. took all of our money. And they went and made deals with health and recreation and a bunch of cannabis companies. High time products are out there. They're making millions and millions and millions oh, yeah. of dollars. And they just got rid of that last CEO, Peter Harberth, which ran Green Lane Cannabis into the ground. He was the CEO of Victoria's Secret for a very long time. Yeah. He is gone now. And they brought in a new CEO who says, we are going to put it up on the market. He says, we've got three years of filings. We got to catch up on. We okay. are in a mess right now. He says, but I'm going to get it clean and we are going to get this on the market. Now, folks, whatever high times is done, whatever the old management has done, whatever you think about them or you feel about them, high times has got a 50 year brand that all of us recognize. Oh, yes. All of us. I would be We're, so interested in that. So when this announces to go on the market, you, I'm not just saying buy it because I'm pre-IPO, but you know, I, I would like, I would like you to buy some of the shares. And put I'd be ready. No, I would be very interested in that. I know but it's not just that. I think something that has that much brand and that that much uh, popularity through decades mm -hmm. of cannabis users, I think that it is going to explode. I, I said it back well. then. I'm saying it again. So keep your eyes open for high times going public. Maybe this time they'll really do it. I hope they do. That'd be awesome. And before we leave, I don't want to leave them hanging. Mesa Goat, where you were talking about bright green, he was saying, okay, bright green, got it. Going to do some DD. And then you kept going with what happened. And he said, bright green, never mind. <laughs> never mind about bright green. But yeah, I won't mislead you, folks. That's if there's some junk it. on the table, I'm going to point it out because that's, that's right. what I'm here for, to look at the bad that and the good. Trash. That was trash. It, and you too. You guys bring up the trash too. If you see trash, share it with us because you know what? That's actually more important than good news. Trash is important. You don't want to sleep in a bed that has bed bugs. You, you want just, to know. <laughs> you want to know what you are trading and what you're dealing with. So that's what we do here. Y'all come back next week and come see us and 
bring those tickers to us. Thank you for showing up, folks. We had fun. Hope you learned something. Hope we helped. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>